Hey everyone, DePressDR here with more Lancashire Mobile Apex for Season 5. Let's go ahead and take a look at what we got here. Uh, so, usually I kind of start these sessions with something I learned. Uh, so, <laughs> what I learned through my many defeats is my Zerida cannot assassinate a Deedlet. Um, well, uh, I came close to doing it with a full hit point Deedlet, and then there was one fight where I didn't have Hide and Seek active, and I, I did a whopping 400 damage <laughs> with Bloodthirster. Um, and it was uh, not something I expected. I, I honestly don't know how I did only 400 damage. Uh, my attack power should have been more than enough to at least do some damage. Um, yeah, it was crazy. I don't know. I don't know what happened. Like even even if she, it, even if she didn't crit or whatever, I don't know how I did only 400 damage to a Deedlet um, with Bloodthirster and all that good stuff. But in any case, that's something I learned. Um, as for this uh, particular box, um, anyone remember Alt Molar? He exists in this game. Um, he does have his three cost skill now, which I didn't really know anything about. Um, other than that, I, I like to call this box kind of like a standard box, not like a meta box. Meta box is like filled with nothing but like AoE and assassins. That's generally the meta. Um, this one kind of has a mix of everything. Um, we surprisingly no Zerida. Uh, no Zerida. The only assassin really is technically uh, Illustrial. I guess you can also count Ledin if you count his little teleport nonsense thing he does. Uh, but the rest is kind of just mages and other things it's it's kind of normal <laughs> for me as opposed to meta which is what i usually see um they actually opened by banning my um one of my faction buffers i'm not exactly sure why but they did I'm, my guess is probably because they didn't want to uh, actually yeah, i have no clue because they usually probably will assume i have a flyer not a not a nurture so yeah no clue why um as for their box as well um one two three uh, three healers, no Deedlet. Uh, they do have a bunch of uh, off healers uh, with uh, Yulia, Chris, and Rachel. Uh, young Jessica, of course, has heals, but you generally don't use her for healing. Um, so, and technically two tanks. No, sorry. One, two. Does he not have a Landius? He doesn't have a Landius. That's crazy. So yeah, he has two t two tanks. Technically, Ultimoiler can guard. Um, but he's not really designed for it. Anyway, I ban their juggler, because that's what I usually do. Take Freya as usual. Ban more of my faction buffers. Take their Ledin. Ledin's probably the only tank I would be comfortable with uh, doing AoE meta stuff, but like I've kind of gone away from the AoE stuff. I have The only AoE I really use is Angelina's. Um, as for who I, what I banned, I, I went straight for Yulia and, and uh, Listel. Everything else is dangerous, like the mages and stuff, but those two were the most, the, the things I was kind of concerned about the most, especially since uh, Lis, uh, Yulia can kind of off heal. Um, they went for, I guess, one of my faction buffers and a healer, uh, so at this point I think I had to pick a healer. They grabbed their TRS. I went ahead and banned their um, their Illustrial and their Young Jessica, so I didn't have to deal with that. Grabbed this, my um, Sophia. They banned my Assassins. Not too big of a deal. They take a Bozal. Also not really a huge deal. And I went ahead and banned the rest of their ma Magic. And I took Claret. Uh, so right now I don't actually have a faction buff for uh, Claret or... Um, Angelina, but I do have Sophia, uh, Sophia's exclusive item. Uh, they actually picked Altamuller, uh, so I was like, okay. I wasn't too concerned about Altamuller. I haven't seen him in forever. Um, and I went ahead and just banned everything else, leaving their healers, because I'm completely okay with them having over an overabundance of healers at this point. Um, I was kind of torn between taking... I was actually almost out of time. I had two seconds left when I picked, did the last pick here. Um, I wasn't entirely sure if I wanted to go Young Jessica or Ros Rosalia. Uh, but since Ledin's very, very physical, um, as far as tanking is concerned, he's pretty decent against magic, but he's overall a physical tank. Um, I figured I would go ahead and use a, take advantage of young Je Jessica's just raw attack power. Also, there's a good chance that Ledin doesn't have freaking thorns, so I don't have to worry about killing myself. And they took, um, they actually took a teleport instead of an act again. 
All right. So this video I'm planning on being a bit long because I think I'm going to do four fights. We'll see how this goes. Depends on how long this will take. Um, so standard off. Well, it's not. I won't say standard, but an offensive oriented TRS uh, as far as buffs are concerned. Offensive support, I guess you can call it. Um, no single target heal, only mass heal. Um, Iris here has no single target heal, only mass heal. Um, no self teleport, but does have uh, Lajarda and Diaris. Um, and mass resist, which I don't think she ever used. <laughs> I don't recall her ever using it. Uh, Bozel self buffing with a bunch of AoE debuffs. Uh, Ledin is no uh, no teleport shenanigans from Ledin. This is a standard Ledin with Divine Guard. Uh, the catch about using Ledin's 3 cost skill uh, is it, it becomes a situation kind of similar to Estelle where he can't expand his guard range until he uses that ability, which he has to target somebody for. Um, so Divine Guard's a little bit safer as far as tanking is concerned. And then we got Ultimolar. Uh, he has Gale for a 20% chance to act, act again. Uh, his 3 cost skill, which is Supreme Battle, and then he has a uh, self faction buff there. So, this is the first time I've actually seen the this faction, uh, the 3 cost skill, so I had to actually read it. Um, standard attack power, ac extra 50% damage. Um, if there are 2 or more enemies within a 1 ring span after the battle, uh, they can, you can act again, but you cannot move again. So it's kind of like Clutterat's ability, but uh, you're kind of stuck in place. So if you get the kill with Supreme Battle, and there's nothing else, and there's only one other character nearby in the ring, um, or two, the, the the people around you are not in range. You kind of just end up wasting an action. Uh, the act, of in, uh, act again effect only has a has a two turn cooldown. Um, if you get a kill with Supreme Battle, it reduces the cooldown by six turns, um, and then this effect requires you to wait around before you can trigger again. So you can't do back to back uh, cooldown triggers. Uh, so it can be a little bit dangerous. Like if he gets um, with um, what I figure what the combination here is is TRS with um, attack blessing and then of course uh, Iris with uh, Lajardin Le uh, would probably put all that on Ultimuller have him, have him rush my tank and pretty much two shot my tank that's what I was kind of expecting here and let's turn on animations all right but I was also concerned about Bozel being teleported in and just start AOEing me um, so But there's not too much I can do. Um, okay, so my Freya does not have any magic guard. Uh, everything else is standard. So, yeah. Alright. So once Ultimiller went down here, I kind of knew where he can go. Um, then again, there was always that chance they can get his Galewood proc, which is a 1 in 5 chance. Uh, which case, he can just cover 10 distance in a single turn. Uh, the Bozel fell back, so I was like, okay, whatever. But a miracle. I went ahead and moved up my Angelina. Uh, I wasn't planning on doing the combo, uh, the AOE combo uh, this round, just simply because of how the spacing is. As you can tell, my opponent is spacing out everything uh, to ensure that it doesn't happen. I went ahead and moved in to get my physical guard up because I'm really concerned about Ultimolar. So, kind of just passing turns right now. All right, Lajardin went ahead and moved up. So since Lajard, uh, since uh, Bozel got te teleported up, I was that actually put me in range to go ahead and do cleanse, uh, so I can start wearing down uh, Ledin. I wasn't expecting to kill him, so that's fine. But the cleanse d d removed two bu uh, buffs from him, and it actually removed his guard expansion. So he actually only has a guard range of one right now. Oh wait, nope, never mind. I am wrong. It's right there. Okay, I don't know what I debuffed. Uh, I removed his attack buff. Yeah, I removed his attack buff, it looks like. And I took out his magic defense buff. Okay. I thought I got rid of his uh, guard buff, uh, which is... Because I'm so used to seeing that buff looking like um, looking like this, where it's just a shield. But for uh, Ledin, it actually looks like the actual ability. Okay. So good thing I didn't actually try attacking. <laughs> Anyway, they're going to heal up. They have to use mass heals, which don't heal as much as a single target heal. Uh, I went ahead and fell back. At this point, I'm falling back just to kind of get ready to get hit by a bunch of AoEs, which I do. Any clock proc, of course. Uh, it's like 30% chance to, to, clock, uh, to proc that. 
So Ultima will decide to move up for some reason. So I was like, okay, well, you're in my range, so I'll go ahead and just attack you. And I'm going to get hit with another black hole. But the, the first thing I did before I actually did the attack with Young Jessica was see how much damage I took from the previous one and kind of base that as my decision on whether or not I could tank another one, which thankfully I could. Um, like I said, the biggest issue is, of course, it's going to be the Bozal and the Ultimate Lord. Those, those are the only things that can really kill me. Uh, Leiden's not really a threat. So I went ahead and used this opportunity to go ahead and do Mass Heal, just to get rid of some of the debuffs and get some of that nonsense off of me. I have like five debuffs on everybody right now. Uh, but since Ultima Lord was wounded, I went ahead and just rushed uh, with, Clor uh, with Claret, and just barely was able to get the kill. I was silenced, and then of course the dot damage finished me off, because I had some dots from the, the two black holes. So it's 4 on 4 still. And I went ahead and just moved, um, moved away there. Um, now I'm getting hit with Earthquake. Alright, so no more Clock Proc, so he's actually on cooldown for all of his abilities right now. So I went ahead and used this opportunity to go ahead and heal up um, Freya a bit. And then I went ahead and moved down. I, pa I passed per turn in place so I can actually be able to move two steps. And I was able to get the kill with the, the second cleanse, which I don't think my opponent was expecting. So at this point, the only killer here is Bozel. I uh, went ahead and moved up and started attacking. Uh, I believe I still had um, Phalanx actives, or not Phalanx, what's it called? Um, I had Lance Phalanx active. Oh, it is called Phalanx. Uh, so I went ahead and used it just to do a little extra dot damage. Um, and I was going to essentially force these the Iris to go ahead and heal or do something. Oh, it, she did use Mass Resist. Good for her. And then for my last action, I went ahead and did Tidal Surge, which just gives me the extra move. And I went ahead and moved up and attacked. Uh, I was not expecting the kill, and I was not disappointed. <laughs> So Bozel is pretty wounded right now. Decided to go ahead and try to go for a kill here, which is fine. So it's three on three. And of course I've got a silence proc on me. But with Fireball, even with Bozel's really high M defense, it's just no match for it. Even, even unbuffed, I was actually kind of amazed I actually got the kill there. Freya almost dead. Yep. Still tanking it. Oh. Yeah, so this uh this freaking iris has a freaking um what's it called? There's a staff that essentially if you have any debuffs on your if you do a single target attack and um your, and the target has debuffs, there's a, there's a chance you can do stun, and that's what this Iris has apparently. So that's what procced and forced uh, forced Freya to be stunned for a round. Um, TRS went ahead and finished off my tank. It wasn't really that big of a de deal. Um, it's now two on two, but I actually can do damage. So I went ahead and just used Rewind to go ahead and refresh my cooldowns. I was a little concerned about the mist, so I had to be sure I didn't get myself stuck. Um, I was a little shocked by Iris kind of moving into melee range to try to attack. It didn't really do anything. Uh, I think in range it would have been a, a kill a kill anyway. So I was like, all right, whatever, I'll kill you. So that leaves Tiaris left. She's going to go ahead and attack Blessing. Um, I couldn't move, so I went, ahead and removed, I went ahead and removed my Siege Tank mode and it proc Breeze. So that actually allowed me to get in range to go ahead and go for the, uh, another kill. Wasn't wasn't quite a kill though, but it was definitely enough to end the fight. Also, I removed all the buffs she just put on. So yeah, I'm actually getting used to using Young Jessica. It's really she's actually really helpful. the The biggest issue with Young Jessica is if if it's against a Landius who has thorns, it just she ends up killing herself and, or nearly killing herself in mo most uh, situations. All right, quest to gold three continues. I think overall it still took, um, compared to just doing it all on, the, on week one, 
uh, technically doing it all week one, you kind of have a chance of getting it a little bit quicker, getting gold three, obviously. Um, but I think it still takes a ton of matches to do, and it's just it's pretty overwhelming to do it all in one week. Anyway, um, they banned my Estelle first. I banned their juggler. As for the rest of the kit, a um, little bit of mixture of uh, assassins. Yeah, it's actually mostly just like kind of a assassin play here. Um, that's really kind of that's all that stood out here. Obviously, they got an Angelina. Uh, Sherry can be a bit dangerous because she can stun. Um, she can also do quite a bit of damage. Also, depending on how she's built, um, what type of troops she has, she can actually be a, an assassin as well. Um, so, kind of dangerous all, overall, but uh, not a lot of magic AoE or anything like that. So, it's not overall. It's not too bad. So, I take my Freya. Uh, they ban my Illustrial and my Faction Buffer. They actually take Zerida first. Um, I used to try to take out the rest of the tanks in this situation, but instead I just I, I, I've long le learned that I just want to stay the course here. So I went ahead and banned their other Assassin and took out their Angelina so I don't have to deal with their AoE nonsense. Took my Assassin, by the way. Uh, Landius is... now they pick their tank. Uh, went ahead and took care of Tiaris and got rid of Listel. Uh, this box, by the way, only has uh, two healers in it. I had Tiaris and uh, Liana here, and then of course they have D-Lit as an off-healer, and then they have Rachel as another off-healer. Uh, ban my Assassin and Angelina. Um, yeah, due to the previous bans, I went ahead and just ended up taking Tiaris. Um, so unfortunately, um, my Zerida can only buff herself. She won't be buffing anyone else. So they took their Liana, um, and I banned their uh, Deedlet, and I think it was their Cherry. So at this point, that, that leaves them with just uh, only a few dangerous en enemies. Uh, they actually have a Freya, by the way. Good for them. Um, I went and took Rosalia. I was a little concerned about possibly like a bunch of physical tanks, um, but Rosalia can kind of hold her own pretty well, because she, she does have uh, Chivalry. She also doesn't need a faction buffer, so that's why I took her. And left me with Dealit and Young Jessica. So I ended up taking Young Jessica. I left them with uh, a Leon and a Freya. They took Leon, and they of course have Bozal as always. So this guy. Okay, so it's not this fight. I've had I. I've had so many fights that had Landius and Bozal that I actually encountered a few that were different. So that's why I was trying to check here. Uh, so the Zera doesn't have a faction buff. She's going to be faction buffed by Bozal. Obviously biggest threats. Uh, the Leon can be a little dangerous, but not really. Um, Bozal, of course, is AoE nonsense. He does have Seal, so he can have a higher chance of silence. Uh, Liana has no single target heals, has Gossipal instead. And uh, Zerida is all about the assassinations, and then Landius is Landius. Uh, nothing too special here. My usual kits. Uh, yep, all usual kits. I went ahead and went uh, mass heal just to have a little bit of cleansing potential to get rid of debuffs if I get hit with anything. Um, I wasn't planning on getting hit by anything, so hopefully that works out for me. So I'm a little concerned about the act again, so I was kind of counting steps for both Zerida and Leon, and as well as Bozal. I was a little surprised that the Zerida kind of uh, already opened up to do assassination, go into assassin mode. She's not really in range or anything. It's also a pretty clear telegraph, so I was like, alright, whatever, I'll just take my time and go over here. Uh, but I, one thing I did count out was how many steps it would take me to get to that Zerida, because right now uh, she is not being guarded by Landius, because as always, Landius usually opens with a faction buff and not their guard buff. Um, so as long as this Zerida does not move again from, like, Liana, um, I can I can actually reach her with Rosalia next turn, uh, once I position. So yeah, I went ahead and position here, so if we count out these tiles real quick. So yeah, uh, if Liana had done uh, Act Again on Zerida here, she could have gotten out of range, and then I wouldn't be able to do anything. Uh, then again, I might have been able to go after Liana herself, but probably not because of Shrine Maidens. But if we count this out, she has 5 movements, so she can get to here. Uh, Chivalry will get her up to hit here, and then her um, uh, Sword of Protection will give her another 3. So she can definitely get anywhere 
She can pretty much either go after Bozal, who's guarded, or go after Zerida, who's not. Uh, so with all that t uh, in mind, I went ahead and did exactly what I said I would do. So I moved to here, put the sword out. I, I stopped a little distance away just to get extra attack from my cavalry from moving steps. I did take some nasty damage here. But it's more than enough to uh, kill a Zerida that has no troops. So, so I traded units, but it was like pretty. I think it was a good trade. So at this point, I, I went ahead and moved in. The only thing that's a threat now is uh, really just the Bozal. I'm not too concerned about the Leon. So I'm kind of just moving in, repositioning as I need to. And I went ahead and got Attack Blessing up on young Jessica, so she's ready to nuke like crazy. Uh, right now, if I if I pass turn in place and get my uh, my two mobility, um, I can get to here and I can s start nuking freely. Uh, guard is up now, so I won't be able to hit anything from there, but that's all right. And now I can get set up for Bloodthirster. So now I can assassinate somebody I want. So I'm not sure what the plan it was here. As you can see, it uh, does not go particularly well. Yeah, it's it just even with angels, it just doesn't do damage. It, Leon just cannot do anything to Freya. He nearly dies from the exchange. So what I think was um, when he moved back here, my initial thought was like, oh, I get to choose who I want to assassinate. But then I realized if I you know take advantage of my. Uh, I act again exclusive item I can go here and ha it's five range with um, in siege mode for single target abilities so I can easily hit this Leon from here so I ended up having to not have to make a decision I just I'm just gonna kill everything so, fireball no more Leon which pretty much means I have a clear shot to go after um, Bozel I did mess up a little bit here um, I should have just went from two. I should have attacked from two range uh, because I, I can't actually move again uh, with the meteor buff because of Landius. So there's not really much I can do about that, but that's okay. So yeah, I went ahead and healed just in, just to do a little extra damage, but that Zerida's dead unfortunately. Um, I could have definitely kept her alive if I had gone two range. So I went ahead and just took my time here. I could have gotten a kill on Landius and forced a self res, but I was just going to go ahead and let uh, Liana pass her, force her actions before I do anything. And so I went ahead and moved up with uh, Freya because Landius is actually not in range to actually physically attack anyone, and Liana can't really do damage. So my other two units are pretty much safe. So cleanse. Get a kill, it's gonna do a self res, and then he'll uh, lose two buffs. I have no idea what buffs they were, but it doesn't really matter. And remember, no single target heals, so he she's already used her one heal, so and just gonna finish this off with a fireball. And that just leaves a, a Liana here. As you can tell, it's a uh, pretty one sided. So yeah, um, like I mentioned, getting a lot of matches with uh, young Jessica, it's been really, really fun. Um, obviously she doesn't do very well if there's a lot of high mobility assassins, but I haven't had to really deal with that this time. Alright, uh, so this during the uh, the band pick phase, this my opponent actually uh, did, a, did a little, uh, what was it, uh, emoji or whatever it was, of like, uh-oh, or something like that. And uh, I responded with, I'm so dead, because I looked at this box, look at this box. Look, there's a Rian, the freaking Ares, uh, there's a Betty. <laughs> uh, this box actually terrified me for a lot of reasons. I mean, obviously there's the Ares and Rian, but there's also a Renata and, an, and a Betty, which obviously you don't really see Betta, Betty at all, and Renata you usually don't see either. Uh, Renata is kind of interesting, because but her kit revolves around giving up the initiative you have to let you, you get hit first to let her stuff proc in most cases 
Uh, the other issue with Renata is she actually doesn't have very good factions. Uh, her factions are dark, and whatever faction Ares is a part of, I don't remember what it's called. Um, there's an exclusive item that will eventually come out, but it's going to be like next year, um, where she'll actually get the benefits from Meteor faction, uh, faction buffs, which is kind of neat. Uh, but yeah, I was actually really concerned about things like Betty, because Usually, I like, I, even though I don't use AoE that often, I do use Angelina, and Betty would just shred Angelina. It wouldn't kill her from the, the backlash, but it would soften her up that I wouldn't be able to get uh, reliable kills. And Renata is actually a hard counter uh, against both Angelina and um, Claret, uh, which we'll kind of go into in, in a bit. Um, they actually banned my Freya first, by the way. Uh, I went and banned their juggler, uh, so I end up getting Estelle again. Uh, but yeah, this match is actually pretty cool. Um, oh, I guess one other thing to mention is Season 4 banner, which means this person's a Langerser, uh, got the Langerser rank in Season 4. Uh, that was actually a, a kind of a, a little bit of a frustration. Every time I was a win away from gold uh, getting Gold 3, um, they would put me against somebody that was a, a Season 4 veteran. Um, it's not like I've, I've beaten people who've had Langers those these boulders before, so it's not like it's not like the end all, but it's still kind of annoying because it kind of means that a bunch of these guys are still in the gold rankings. Actually, supposedly according to this match, this person's still in silver one. Alright, anyway. Rambling a bunch. So, they banned my Delit and my Zerda, of all things. So I was like, okay. Um, I of course, They actually picked a tank. I was thankful for that. So I got rid of Rian and Ares. Um, I took Angelina. Uh, they banned my uh, my Assassin. They banned my young Jessica here. And they took a Bozal. I was like, okay. Uh, since I have Estelle and I kind of have a pseudo faction buff now, um, I kind of I kind of have free reign to pick whoever I want. Um, one thing I did notice uh, is they only had one, two, three. They had four healers. Um, I was a little torn on what, who to pick here because uh, everything here was stuff I didn't want to deal with, particularly Renata, Estelle, and Betty. Um, but they had four healers, well, technically five if you count Lycoris. So I was like, you know what, I'll just ban the two he the two healers that are going to be really, really bo bothersome and force them to pick a healer this round. And that's when I picked my healer. They went and got rid of Illustrial and got rid of my other faction buffer. They took uh, Chloe as their healer. Uh, at this point, I got rid of both Listelle and Betty. Like I said, Betty's... With Angelina, I did not want to deal with all that nonsense of getting... Uh, for those who don't know how Betty works, anyone that gets damaged, including herself, um, that's near, or anyone that's near Be uh, Betty, in including herself, that gets damaged, uh, she does a essentially a retaliation fixed damage that bypasses immunity. It also has a potential of doing a random debuff, which can include heal reversal, um, and it stacks. Uh, so if you hit five, like if you hit Betty and all of her allies. Um, in a team of five, that means you get that fixed damage five times, uh, which is usually not enough to kill you, but it definitely will make you suffer. Anyway, I end up taking Claret here because uh, I wanted to take advantage of my mobility and potentially try to rush down this Landius. Uh, they actually pick Renata here, and I didn't realize how annoying Renata was going to be for this particular setup because, like I said, they're hard she's kind of a hard counter for both Claret and Angelina. Um, I ended up leaving them him with uh with uh what's his name? I don't remember his name. Well whatever, this guy that does the summon of the robots and nonsense. Um and left him with a healer, because I was like I could kinda handle both of those. Um I did not want to deal with any more mass AoE debuffs or terrain manipulation, so that's why I went ahead and went with Lacoris and uh Renee. Um I took I ended up taking Rosalia. Uh, but I was a bit of concern because obviously Chloe can have spears and so can Landius. And as you can probably see here, this Landius is actually a spear Landius and not a cavalry. Uh, which I don't, you don't get to see that during the actual band pick phase. Um, so yeah, crazy stuff here. So let's go ahead and uh, go right into this. Alright, so I already passed my turn here. Um, Claret passes in place, just get her mobility. Um, nothing too out of the ordinary here. Uh, I went with uh, Mass Heal again just in case I get hit with Bozal's AoEs or anything like that. Um, as you can see, Chloe has Phalanx uh, troops, and then this Landius is Spear and has Heavy Um So 
I was a little concerned about whether or not my Rosalia would actually be able to do anything. But the real issue is this is the Renata. Um, this Renata, I, th I don't know if I don't know if she's five or six stars, but the way she works, like I mentioned before, is anyone if she, any friendly unit is attacked within uh, one ring range, uh, Renata gets plus two mobility. It lasts for one turn, and then the um, the attacker that did the damage gets afflicted with Dragon Seal. And if uh, Renata attacks anyone that has a Dragon Seal, uh, they can't actually be guarded. Also, they take uh, the person with the seal takes 40% extra damage from Renata. And while they have the Dragon Seal, they can't trigger Act Again effects. So that means I can't trigger I can't trigger Lightning Flash, and I cannot trigger uh, Breath of the Tides. Um, so that's something I had to be aware of. So I was, one of the biggest things I was keeping track of is that one worrying around Renata, because that's going to be pretty huge. Um, everything else here is pretty standard. Uh, she's, she has some self healing and reflection ability capabilities, which is kind of neat. Um, and then her um, three cost skill is Thunder Flash, which actually does. Um, let's say if the target unit's movement type is flying, they actually attack first. Uh, so they attack first against flying. Also, if they attack somebody that has Dragon Seal, um, they, they actually get uh, they actually get a, a, a temporary self res, which is kind of neat. Um, and then they ha she has the ability to essentially afflict somebody with Dragon Seal that does a little extra damage, uh, which has a range of four blocks. So that's something I have to measure out because if she tags somebody like my healer, uh, Renata can then follow up next round to attack uh, attack my healer, and I won't be able to guard against it. Oh yeah, there's one other thing I, I need to check here. Um, Bozo here, AOE with faction buff. Uh, Chloe, all heals. And Sophia, all heals. So I went ahead and moved in Rosalia first. Um, Rosalia is not really going to be much of a threat right now because obviously Landius is there. Um, Rosalia herself is actually holy, not, not mounted, but her troops are mounted. So got my little fancy uh, mobility and pseudo faction buff up and running. And as you can see, everyone's really close to Renata right now. I went ahead and put Attack Blessing on Angelina just to kind of put some pressure um, on my opponent. But uh, I can't do anything while that Renata's close by. So I'm kind of I'm just kind of taking the center right now and kind of waiting for my opportunity to strike. Um, I went ahead and fell back. Um, I actually got a... Um, I actually got a... Uh, random buff from uh, TRS onto Claret, which actually gave her an extra 3 mobility. So her mobility right now is 13 this round. And as you can see, it covers quite a bit of distance. Um, now the key thing here is the Renata actually took a step forward, so right now she is actually not to... no one is nearby her. So as long as I don't hit her, um, I will not proc the Dragon Seal. Um, now the other thing to note is um, peace of mind means uh, the Slandius can't be pushed around. Um, at this point, I had to pick kind of who I want to kill. I was a little concerned about uh, Chloe being too tanky. Um, I wasn't going to be able to push Sophia way out of guard range, so that kind of just leaves Bozel. And if I can get Bozel killed, um, that will pretty much take care of all my issues. Also, right now, um, Aurora Ring has not been used yet, so Bozel should not be immune to fixed damage. So I went ahead and moved here. For the Tides. So that's just going to push him away, freeze them, and then I'm going to finish him off. So that just leaves Renata. Um, everything else is not really a threat. But the other, as I mentioned before, leaving Angelina in this back back row here kind of forces them to act. Um, I went ahead and proc'd Phoenix Wave, uh, mainly just to get my guard range expanded. Now this did expand Renata's re attack range, which was something I sort of paid attention to. Um, I ended up not moving again. Yeah, so I can't get the benefit of move again effects, uh, so I ended up just staying in place. Um, and my Rosalia is actually not in guard range, and thanks to Renata's expanded movement range, uh, my Rosalia is actually in danger right now. And like I was talking about before, since Angelia is out here in the back, they kind of have to do something about it, and the mist is closing in. So that's another thing to note. Also, the Sophia has that helmet that gives a passive silence, which did proc, which is a little annoying, but doesn't really matter for Angelina because all of her stuff is on cooldown. Alright, mass heal. Not a big deal. 
get some random immunities, random buffs. So I went ahead and moved in to attack. Uh, the main reason I did this was just to kind of put some pressure on Landius here, uh, but also so I can, since, um, like I mentioned before, Renata's out of range, I can go ahead and get my act again. And I went ahead and used that to go ahead and get in position so I can block Renata. So right now, uh, the Renata cannot reach my Rosalia anymore, so she's actually safe. Alright, so Renata is going to strike first. <laughs> That's pretty good damage, but and then I went ahead and moved in to finish things off. Actually, I kind of want to rewind there. I think I actually, I think I removed her self res. I think I removed her self res. Oh, actually, no, never mind. I'm I'm an idiot. So the reason why she didn't get the the unflinching is because she didn't attack something that had dragon seal. Um, like I mentioned before, Angelina didn't have Dragon Seal up and running, so we'll just get to see this again. So even with the damage reflection, it doesn't really matter. I got the kill I needed. So at this point, it's just Landius. Um, their healers are not really built for any sort of damage. And Landius is not really built for offense that much because he's a spear. I wanted to use this opportunity to kind of remove some of the effects that Renata put on uh, on Estelle. So I believe her move again is active again. So I went ahead and used this opportunity to go ahead and put more pressure on Landius. And also I started putting out Sword just to give myself some additional uh, support. So remember, once this gets up to, once I get to three stacks, uh, anything that's within two range of a Sword gets a t plus 10% to all stats except for HP. Also, the ultimate judgment makes it so Landius' attack range becomes zero, <laughs> so he can't actually do anything. It, of course, the debuff gets removed just with a heal, but that's that's completely fine for me. And again, proc the proc the silence. So I went into World One Staff just so I can move an extra two steps. It also puts up steel, uh, steel that uh, steel buff or whatever, which is kind of helpful. All right, so Chloe attack did some damage. Um, then I moved. I just went ahead and moved into a uh, guard range, so I don't have to worry about anything. Um, Estelle's guard is only physical, but like I said, their healers are not going to do anything. I went ahead and pulled Claret back. Um, obviously, the big danger here is uh, that mist is closing in, so that's why the Sophia had to move. Uh, she moved into the water just to avoid dying this round. And then, of course, the uh, the Landius also had to move somebody, somewhere so the mist doesn't get him. Uh, which I was kind of fine with. I wasn't that concerned about keeping them pinned down because I kind of have, I have, I outnumber them and I have actual things that can actually kill them. So I just kind of used this opportunity to go ahead and refresh my um, my guard buff on Sophia here with the Estelle attack and just kept on going. I was a little concerned about them attacking Rosalia um, with like a ranged magic attack with like Sophia, but they didn't do anything with like that. Also, I don't think it would have killed anyway. So, silence, not a big deal. I went ahead and just fell back at this point. I, I didn't really need to rush anything. And their units are so slow that they can't really do anything anyway. So I'm just kind of pat getting myself repositioned, making sure I don't get blocked out of the center just in case. Because the last thing I need, need to happen is get screwed over by the mist myself. So, healed up Cl uh, Claret, so now she can actually go and kill things again. It's now two on four. Even with spears, I wasn't too concerned. I can pretty much just gradually whittle him down at this point. He's obviously trying to move back to the center, which is fine. All right, Aurora Ring, so they're now immune to fixed damage. Some of my stuff, my uh, some of my uh, spells finally got. Uh, refreshed here. Unfortunately, I'd, her uh, her 3 cost skill actually has a pretty long cooldown, so I can only attack normally. But still does some pretty good damage, despite me using cavalry troops against spears. And of course I get a bunch of uh, extra healing fix with the sword and uh, TRS there. Replying, um, replying buffs here. And then I was going to go ahead and see if I can finish off this Landius here. 
So lightning flash. Self reses. Um, I don't have any more buffs anymore, but that's completely fine for me. So I'll just loop around here just to kind of protect TRS just in case. And at this point, it's four on one, and I think my opponent gives up at this point. Nope, keeps on going. I, I didn't remember if this person actually fought to the end or not. So, soften it up with TRS. Finish things off with uh, an unbuffed Claret. So yeah, really cool match. Um, like I said, I never fought with Renata before, so it was kind of neat to experience. Alright, give me one second. Alright, sorry about that. For some reason I kept thinking it's like I had something else on on my computer. Anyway, so, uh, I like I mentioned before, um, anytime I was close to getting to gold 3, I usually went up against somebody that had season 4 banners and stuff like this. My opponent does not, though that it doesn't mean he does, isn't, wasn't Lancaster in the past or not. Um, as for the box setup, um, decent... Decent amount of AoE, some single, a uh, couple assassins. Obviously, there's freaking um, mystery knight there. Um, I was very concerned about the mystery knight as always, but of course I'm concerned about Rian. Um, that's about it. I mean, every there's like I said, everything else is kind of dangerous too, but it's mostly it's single target, not a lot of AoE. Um, they ban my Zerd at first, and they take Landius. Um, I, at this point, I went ahead and banned uh, their TRS, and I banned their Rian. Um, as for healers, they have D-Lit, TRS, uh, Lycoris, and I guess technically U Yulia. So this, this box actually had very few healers in it. So I was like, alright, I'll take my Freya. Uh, they banned my TRS and banned my D-Lit. They take Mystery Knight, so I was like, alright, well... Gonna have to deal with her now. Uh, oh, they have a Leona too, which I went ahead and banned, along with their d -lit. So at this point, they don't have any healers except for Lycoris at this point. And I guess Yulia's off healing. Um, I was a little concerned about having no primary healer, so I took Sophia. Um, which was fine, since they went straight for my faction buffers anyway. Uh, they took Lycoris, so now they have a technically a healer. Um, I banned their Assassin, I banned their Lestelle. I take my Angelina. So the only buff I have for Angelina right now is the Sophia exclusive item. Um, they went ahead and banned the rest of my high mobility. Uh, they, gave, they went ahead and picked uh, Lana there. Uh, went ahead and got rid of Yusuke and uh, Yulia. So that leaves just the, the two dark casters there. Uh, I took a Lustreal. Lustreal is not too great on this map, but there is a lot of grassland. So at least I can bypass guard if I need to. And of course, uh, they took... Uh, they didn't take Bozal, they took Lana, so Lana actually has longer range, which is pretty dangerous. And despite having no fancy buffs for Shalinka, I went ahead and took Shalinka. Because um, assassination having an assassin is always useful. So, uh, biggest issue is of course the Luna here. Uh, the Luna has the Wind God Realm, which does expand the range of this this Knight of Mystery. Um, and then of course it expands the range of Lana for her AoEs. This Lacoris is all offense for the most part. The only heal she has is technically Dark Despair. Uh, she technically she, she can also heal by just doing AoEs without transforming uh, to put heal terrain down. But as you can probably tell, this is all about just AoE offense here. So um, it, as far as uh, Illustrial, I went since there were so many casters, I went ahead and took Gargoyles instead of Archers and uh, got on rush for my melee strike if need be. Uh, everything else here is pretty standard. I replaced um, I replaced Barb with uh, Iron Rose, so that way I can at least guard against magic if I need to, because obviously this this Knight of Mystery is just going to run around everywhere. Um, so one of the things I definitely measured out was how far this Lana could go. Uh, with Luna, that's an extra two movement, so that'll be going all the way to here which means her magic range is 1, 2, 3, 4 this round. So pretty much she's going to reach me in round 2 no matter what. But Landius is going to go ahead and open. Oh, uh, one thing to note about this Landius is this Landius does not have uh, the 3 cost skill, so he can actually be pushed around. Um, 
So I'm pretty sure they do that on purpose just to ensure that, um, you know, everyone stays within a guard range. So I went ahead and went to the water here just to kind of get myself some some space around her to kind of gather around. Because like I mentioned, that mystery knight can move quite far. Um, with the Wind God Realm, she can move 7. And then of course she has hit and kind of backtrack, which is like a hit and run ability. Uh, pretty much by round 2, she can pretty much target anyone. And if I leave anyone exposed, she will Broken Spear them, and that will just be the end of them. So, faction buff. Yeah, I think it's just a standard. Yeah, move again when God Realm Queen Accession. The only difference between this this Luna and mine is hers is a flyer. So, mass heal just to get the buffs up. I kind of wanted the weight, but I I wanted to get these buffs up as soon as possible just so I can position where I need to position. Uh, Knight of Mystery went ahead and moved her 7. Uh, the more she moves, by the way, the more this little cumulative count will go up. And once it hits uh, 25, I think it is, it resets all of her cooldowns. So she's just going to run around a bunch and then hit me and then reset all of her cooldowns. So I'm going to do Fleeting Flash just to teleport. And I'm going to teleport next to Freya just so I can be guarded. And then I'm going to, at this point, I saw my opening here. So what I can do here. If I move to here, I could AoE four of them, but it pushes all of them back. But if I AoE just only three of them, um, the chorus is actually going to prevent these two from being pushed back, and it'll push back the Luna. So I'll actually keep Luna out of the fight a little bit. Also, it'll mean my, that the chorus will remain within attack range, and uh, Lanius can't guard it, can't guard her right now. So Breath of the Tides, and pop. And then pop. Alright, good stuff. So, this was a bad move by Lana here. Um, it, not the killing part. That's fine. Uh, but the problem is she stayed in place. And the reason why I teleported here specifically was to put, uh, put uh, Lana in danger. Um, so, uh, Mang Nova taking the time to actually attack uh, Angelina like that gave me pretty much the opportunity I needed. So ran up, death blow. Since she's she's adjacent to uh, Landius here, I can ad attack directly and just go straight for the kill. Now she's strong enough to actually kill with a counter attack, um, which kind of sucks, but that's fine because now they have no healers and uh, the only magic user is this uh, is Mystery Knight now, which Mystery Knight is cavalry. Uh, so even though it's all magic, um, my Freya can actually do reasonably well. So second death on, uh, on Sri Lanka. But they have no healer. Um, and I still have my um, Illustrial, and as long as I have Grasslands, I can, att I can attack kind of freely here. Um, the, uh, the Mystery Knight is actually at 22 out of 25 steps, so her uh, cooldown has not reset yet. So I don't have to worry about Thunder Zone. Uh, so that all that leaves is Broken Spear, but since I'm guarding everything, uh, she can't really get an attack off. So I just moved up. I'm, as you can see, I'm moving in a way to ensure that I, I have um, I have uh, magic guard coverage. I'm not going to actually use the spell because if I do, uh, I'll become physically vulnerable. I was a little shocked that she did this. I don't know why. Um, let's rewind real quick. So her her um, backtrack is still on cooldown. Um, so she needed to wait one more turn. If she had waited one more turn, she could have AOE then moved away. It wouldn't have made much of a difference because I could just tank the hit and then heal it up because I have Sophia here. Uh, really, the only kind of danger here is Luna possibly getting a um, with a cursed spear possibly negating Freya's heals, but to kind of ensure that didn't happen, I usually would make sure um, I had either I make sure Freya's out of range or I make sure Freya goes uh, goes last. That way I can cycle the debuffs off. So yeah, Thunder Zone, it's not going to do anything. It's like, okay, got it. And then I just move in. 
I don't really need the heals on Freya yet, so I just heal up Illustrial. I wasn't sure how tanky, um, how tanky the um, Mystery Knight was, so I went ahead and attacked with uh, Freya first. Uh, the main reason why I did this was because out of range, so I didn't really have to worry about anything. So I almost killed the Knight Mystery just with Freya, which is kind of neat. So move up. So the reason why I'm able to attack at range with these uh, these flying troops is because I have a Euler's bow. All right. And yeah, so at this point it's two on three, but I have a healer. And you can probably guess what my opponent's going to try next, and it's not going to work. So I want to use this opportunity to go ahead and heal up, get my buffs, uh, get some defense buffs up. I was pretty much planning on doing faction buff next, but uh, Luna here kind of saved me the trouble. Didn't, it didn't. It ended up not procking the um, the cursed spear. It wouldn't have made a difference. It just they didn't have enough damage to actually do anything. And Landius' cavalry versus spears. It just was not going to be enough. But that was all I needed. I am now officially. I am now gold three. So I did this over what a course of three weeks. Um, I think it's a little faster if you do it week one, obviously, because you do it week one. But. I think the number of matches is still about the same, so it was at least I, I didn't have to kill myself with a bunch of matches through an entire weekend, so it wasn't as bad. Uh, still, I kind of wish it was a little bit, I gotten this a little bit faster just to get the benefits sooner, but at least it's now finally over. Um, and as far as the event's concerned, it's going to be finished up by the time you see this video, which uh, I managed to get all the challenges done. The last challenge was so much fun because uh, it, it was actually. Uh, demon bosses that didn't that actually didn't have that knots they actually took extra damage from holy usually when they do that that stuff they usually make it so they ignore um type disadvantage but they didn't in this one so it was just a lot of fun got the shred things with yulia and all that but yeah i'm now officially goal three that was kind of my goal i now have the angelica um skin here uh my lacora should be Actually, I don't need to do it here. I can just do it over here real quick. Uh, my Lacorus is going to be um, six stars Six stars by next Saturday. Or probably by the time you guys see this video, she'll be six stars. Because this is going to probably... I have a kind of a backlog of these matches now that I'll be gradually trickling in. Um, but as of recording this, I am still working on Lacorus, Arian Rod, who is currently four stars and Rosalia, who is also four stars. Uh, once Lacorus is done, um, I'm probably going to keep working on Akaya, uh, because Akaya right now is four stars, and uh, eventually she's going to get her uh, exclusive weapon, which is going to make her pretty, pretty useful um, in the future. Uh, beyond that, I'm just going to be looking forward to new characters. Uh, the big ones, of course, is I believe... Um, is it Helena? I think Helena is the next one which is a cavalry unit that can actually put down crystal terrain, which is kind of neat. She's also got the unique ability to disable the uh, item effects. So like your equipped items could actually be disabled, which is kind of cool. Uh, beyond that though, sorry. Uh, beyond that though, uh, I'm really looking forward to the next um, collaboration, which is going to be with Overlord, uh, which will have Abeto and Sheltier. And Albeto will probably be my next uh, tank because uh, she is actually super, super tanky. And uh, will definitely change things up, hopefully. Anyway, uh, enough rambling. Hopefully this, this video is probably going to go on pretty long because I'm going to lump all these all these matches together. But uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed it. And obviously there will be more matches in the future, just a lot less of them. <laughs> it's just something because I'll be doing just my uh, my weekly wins, and that's about it. So I'm Theta Prestigior. This was Langers Mobile Apex uh, Season 5. See you guys later.